This video is for all the folks who left comments asking for content about editing. I didn't think anyone would be interested in something like that, but I was wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. I figured a good place to start would be showing you what principles and guidelines I use when editing the Justin Road Show, Justin's vlog. If there's still interest in more editing content after that, I'd be happy to make more that are maybe a little bit more technical and in the software. With that said, here are the top five guidelines I use for editing Justin's vlog. Number one, the 10 second rule. YouTube's algorithm rewards videos that hold a viewer's attention longer. This is known as viewer retention, which is measured by average view duration. The higher the average view duration is for a video, the more likely YouTube is going to reward that video, promote it more, thus it'll get more views and more ad revenue for the creator. Those of you who watch Justin's vlog may have noticed that at times Justin tends to go on and on a little bit in some monologues or even in dialogues with other people. And even if that topic of discussion is interesting to the viewer, the viewer can start getting bored with what they're seeing, start zoning out, spacing out, and click out of the video, thus ending the view duration and hurting the overall average. In order to reduce the likelihood of that happening, we use the 10 second rule. In order to keep the viewer more stimulated during the longer scenes, Justin tries to be mindful of changing the camera angle or his background during talks. Here's an old video of me explaining what I mean by changing the camera angle to change the background and to avoid jump cuts. We'll talk about jump cuts more here in a minute. So I'm gonna demonstrate what it should look like when you change your camera angle, say either because you're talking too long in one particular spot and you wanna break your scene up, you wanna change that angle so the viewer doesn't get zoned out with the same image going, or because you make a mistake. So I've just changed my camera angle 30 degrees over in one direction. I've also changed hands. I was holding in the last shot left-handed and slightly oriented on this side of the screen. Now I'm holding it right-handed and oriented on the other third. So the idea here is when Justin's filming, he is trying to change his background, change his scene at least every 10 seconds. But sometimes this isn't really practical for him during filming. So that's where I have to do it in the edit. Here are four techniques that I use in order to implement the 10 second roll in the edit. The first technique is B-roll. B-roll is the technical term for footage that supplements the main shot, often used to transition from scenes or to express a passage of time. It's the footage you see that is over someone talking and usually represents what the person is mentioning. In fact, what you're seeing right now is B-roll, and if we take the B-roll away, it's me sitting here talking. B-roll. This is A-roll, that was B-roll. And here's another example of what I mean by B-roll. It's three o'clock, that means it's afternoon chore time, but I just checked the waters, we put the calves up, and check the hay. The images of the water, the cow, and the hay illustrate what Justin's talking about. So you're not just looking at his face, you're actually getting to see what he's talking about. This makes it more interesting to the viewer and it keeps the scene changing so you don't get bored with what you're seeing. Another technique I use during a longer scene and need to change it to meet the 10 second rule is a slow push in on either the speaker or the action happening in the scene. In fact, you're seeing that happen right now. We have this subtle push in and our overall scene is changing, although slightly, it still helps the viewer not space out or get bored with what they're seeing. Another technique I use that's similar to the push-in is the punch-in. And this is where the screen just does a quick zoom in instead of the slow, subtle push-in. We get the same effect by changing our scene, it changes our background a little bit, and that helps keep things visually stimulating for the viewer. Last technique I use for adhering to the 10 second rule is hitting the delete button. Sometimes if things are going just a little bit too long, things are getting a little boring or monotonous, I just cut it all together. That way we can keep things under 10 seconds, keep things short and sweet, which sometimes is really the best practice. Guideline number two is avoiding the use of inappropriate jump cuts. And what are jump cuts? I'm glad you asked. A jump cut is an editing technique that cuts between two sequential shots. 
In these shots, the camera position doesn't change, or only changes a small amount, but the subjects move, giving the appearance of jumping around frame. Jump cuts give the effect of moving forward through time. Here's an example of an appropriate use of jump cuts. But more often than not, in a YouTube video, jump cuts are basically the byproduct of cutting out a mistake that's made mid-sentence and then piecing it back together. He invited me to come over and see what was going on, do a little video of the innovation going on with rocket mass heaters. Right now, Paul is hosting six of the most leading- Oh, daily temperature check-in. Check this out, guys. It is 22 degrees outside and 32 degrees here in the greenhouse. That is a 10 degree difference. How awesome is that? I know that the outside temperature is correct because I just verified it with the weather channel. Those inappropriate jump cuts can be jarring to the viewer. It can kind of disrupt the whole flow of the message. And to me, it's kind of sloppy. And those things can lead to a viewer deciding to want to leave a video, click off of it, and thus hurting the viewer retention metric of the video. I still need to edit out mistakes though that are made during the video, but there are better ways to do it rather than using an inappropriate jump cut. In fact, the different techniques I use to fix the jump cut are the same ones we've already talked about from the 10 second rule. The first one I'll try to use if I have it available is B-roll. So here's a video example that shows me using jump cuts and then the same video portion with B-roll added to it to cover up the jumps. Check it out. Goal number one is to get quadruped livestock back on the homestead. Right now I only have a half dozen chickens. This spring I expect to bring back both lambs and pigs. So just getting our baseline reestablished is priority number one. Goal number one is to get quadruped livestock back on the homestead. Right now I only have a half dozen chickens. This spring I expect to bring back both lambs and pigs. So just getting our baseline reestablished is priority number one. Version two, the B-roll version looks a lot better, doesn't it? But if I don't have B-roll, I can still cover the cut by using the punch-in effect that I used in the 10 second roll. Watch this. It's a new year here on the grass-fed homestead, which means it is time to set our goals for the year. I'm breaking the goal list up into two categories. There's gonna be the actual goal list. These are my top priorities for the year. And then there's the that would be nice to have category if things work out both time and budget wise. So first up, let's talk about what the actual goals are, what are gonna be my top priorities this year moving forward on the homestead. The slow push in effect doesn't work here to cover a jump cut, but we still have also the option to just delete. Let's move on to guideline number three, which is show, don't tell. And what I mean by this is instead of a video of Justin's talking head saying what he's going to do or describing what he is doing, I show you over that with B-roll. And I already showed you one example of that. I'll show you that again real quick. It's afternoon chore time, but I just checked the waters. We put the calves up and check the hay. And here's another example of what I mean to help illustrate the point. This will not level out, okay, on its own. But eventually we'll have the cows running through here, then the sheep, and then the mower. And so just think, hey, I'm gonna have to mow this. Let's get it smooth, smooth enough to mow. So let me put the seed down, Josiah. And then Jackson, you can follow me with the hay. This technique really helps move that story along. Not only are we covering up just a boring shot of Justin's face the whole time talking, we're covering up with action, but we're also condensing the whole timeline of the story because we're not getting a bunch of talking and then action, we're getting talking and action at the same time. Guideline number four revolves around transitions. Justin and I like to avoid abrupt transitions. Again, we like a smoother flow for the viewer. It's best practice to get the transitions right when you're filming, but again, it's not always practical. That's where I come in as the editor and do subtle little things to help smooth it out. One technique I use to help make transitions more smooth and subtle is the use of either a J cut or an L cut, and I use these a lot. A J cut is simply when you hear the audio for the next clip that's about to play while the current clip is still playing. Here's what I mean. 
a new year here on the Grassfed Homestead, which means it is time to set our goals for the year. That subtle use of the J cut really helps smooth out that transition from being outside and getting this big wide scene to a close up indoor scene. Music can also play a role in helping transitions. One thing I'll do is bring in music before the transition occurs and have it really quiet and slowly ramp up so when the transition occurs, you already feel it coming because that music was already building up to it. Another musical tool to use for a transition is the use of a sting or a stinger, as some people will call it. And this is when you have just a very, very short little music clip that indicates a transition is happening. And here's an example of how I use them in the Justin Road Show. She's taking it like a champ. Yeah, let it soak in for an hour, then you can put the cap back on. And now that we're talking about music, that brings us to guideline number five, which is about music. The majority of the time, we want Justin's vlog to be a fun family experience, so I choose the music accordingly. But to make it more fun, I will often cut to the beat if there is a strong beat to the song. Here's an example. Did you hear that? I was cutting or changing the scene on either the second or fourth beat of the measure. That's when the snare hit. So when you hear that snare pop, the scene would change. Little things like that can keep a viewer watching a little bit longer, which is what we all want as YouTube creators. Music complements what the viewer is seeing on the screen, how they work together to give the viewer an overall better experience. Again, helping retention. Those are my top five guidelines I use when I'm editing Justin Rhodes video content. Of course, there are many more little things going on in every edit and each vlog presents its own unique challenges and circumstances that I have to address differently. If you found this video interesting or useful in any way and would like to see more content like this about production or editing, leave a comment down below. Tell me that you liked it and tell me what exactly you'd like to see or ask any questions you might have. and. If this video gets enough views, I'll probably make more content like this for you guys.